Hey guys, so today's video is my new and beauty for July and this month is a bumper month, okay? I feel like July is the month to launch things because there are so many things coming out. So without further ado, jumping into one of the things that has the most hype this month, the Naked Heat palette from Urban Decay. This has seen a little bit of like limited edition release or limited release. I think it had a one day sale like a couple of weeks ago, but it's officially out on the 27th of July in the UK. And as you guys know, the Naked palettes get a lot of hype, but I think this one is gonna be super, super popular because it is warm kind of copper tones. I love the color of these. I do think it's absolutely beautiful and I would use it and I have used it and I think it's gorgeous, but I think it is lacking a dark, dark brown or a black. Um, it has this kind of like aubergine -y, kind of warm brown matte color, which is ashes. And then it has this um, kind of like deep, deep red on fuego. Um, but I do think it's lacking that almost like a dark liner color, in my opinion, but it is very, very beautiful. The packaging is like super retro 80s, which I love. It's kind of tacky, but kind of brilliant at the same time. So that is coming out on the 27th of July, gorgeous. And I'll do some swatches on screen so you guys can see that. The rest of the collection, is a bit hit and miss in my opinion. There are three lipsticks. Two of them are quite shimmery and I'm not a massive fan, but there is a really nice one called Fuel, which is a really gorgeous kind of deep nude color. These are the Vice lipsticks, so the texture is beautiful. This is a cream. I think are they all creams? There's a cream and, meta and then two metalized. So they're like the slightly shimmery, like metallic colors, which I have to say, I'm not into metallic lipstick. I never have been really. I just don't think it's a great look. The packaging of these, however, I know is gonna have people kind of going a little bit nuts because they are like a copper. I would say rose gold, but they're really not rose gold. They're like very, very coppery version of the kind of shotgun shell design of the Vice lipstick. So I think people are gonna love that. Um, and the color Fuel is really, really beautiful. It's like that gorgeous kind of peachy deep nude. I think people are gonna go nuts for that. And then there are two eyeliners, which I have to say I'm not a fan of because they are quite, um, they're just a certain color. I feel like even if I was using like that warm kind of brownie toned eyeshadows from the palette, I would still want like a deep eyeliner and especially this one, which is Torch is like a terracotta -y kind of color. I just wouldn't wear that as an eyeliner. It's slightly too ready. And then Alkaline, which actually is a bit nice. I just totally took the freaking end off this. I can't believe I just did that, what an idiot. Which is more of like an aubergine -y color and it is pretty, it's that one on the end there. But I don't know whether I would buy an Urban Decay color of that because I don't think I would wear it very much, if you get what I mean. I think if I'm gonna buy an expensive eyeliner, it would probably be like a black or a brown because I don't know how much wear I'd get out of these, but the palette itself, definitely rate, it's gorgeous. And then NARS have also got some gorgeous launches this month. They're coming out at the beginning of the month, so these will be out already when this video goes up. But the first thing they've got is this contour palette, which can we just take a moment to appreciate how beautiful the packaging is? It's like a gorgeous kind of burnished gold. And then inside you've got ooh, six colors. So you have two contour colors, four highlighters. Personally, I would have preferred to see four larger pans instead of six, so two highlighters and two contours, because I think four highlighters, I don't know whether you necessarily need them all, and these two are actually fairly similar. One of them is a bit more golden, but I just think if you're gonna be using this kind of highlight, you're probably not gonna be using that kind of highlight based on your skin tone. Just throwing it out there. I think that's 45 pounds, and then they have another palette, which personally is my favorite. This is so up my street for summer. This is, oh, that one was called the Border Plage um, palette. And then this one is called the Angel Pride palette. This one has four blushes, a bronzer and a highlighter. And for me, that just like covers all of your bases. It's got a Laguna. The highlighter color is Hot Sand, which is just beautiful. And it's not like too shimmery. It's just a really gorgeous kind of glowing color. Quite pale, but like definitely would show up. And then there are four blushes and all of these are, it's like Angel Pride one to four. So they're all new shades, I believe. But how gorgeous is that? And the packaging is 
stunning really really beautiful again 45 pounds that's out at the beginning of the month and then they're also bringing out um shadow sticks which i love cream eyeshadow sticks they're some of my favorite products i love the laura mercier ones i love the bobby brown ones um these are called velvet shadow sticks from nars and the pigmentation of these is amazing like look at this dark color and how easily that's washed on i'll do it again to show you guys but it is like a joke and the blending they just blend beautifully so that color is dark angel i've got two others i've got corfu and nepal corfu is like a gorgeous kind of um champagne -y kind of taupey color and then actually it's more of a taupe and then nepal i think is more of a kind of matte slightly more matte like champagne kind of color with a little bit of pink in it really good base color and they just blend beautifully they're really really creamy and nice um, very much looking forward to trying these out. Again, these are out at the beginning of the month. So they're definitely the launches that I'm most excited for, those past two. But Dior are also launching their lip tattoos this month. These are £25 each, I believe, and they are lip stains. So if you are a lip stain fan, definitely worth checking out. I'm not as hyped for these as I was for the lip lacquer sticks. I really liked those. I'm not really, like, that much of a stain kind of girl, but... For lip stains, they are really, really beautiful. They kind of have a similarity to the YSL glossy stains, but obviously less of a kind of gloss texture, but they have that same kind of feel when you put them on. They feel really nice. They're not just like watery. They're actually quite balmy in texture. And then they dry down to a stain and these stain for a really long time. Like my finger is now gonna be pink for the next two days probably. Um, but really beautiful. I have four colors. All of which are really nice, actually. I have um, 761, 491, 421, and 451, which I realise is not useful. And they're actually called Natural Coral, Natural Beige, Natural Rosewood, and Natural Cherry. So yeah, you can use them as like a really pretty kind of sheer wash of colour, or you can use them as like a, you can layer them up and have like a real pop of colour. I actually quite like the idea of the nude ones because they are a little bit more versatile in that sense because they really do, like even though this packaging look, looks quite nude, when you put it on, you can see it's actually quite deep. And if you layer that up, you can really get quite a good pigmentation with those. So they're coming out and the packaging is gorgeous as well. It's like matte and they're colour coded. And then Lancome are launching these super cute little blushes called the Blush Subtle Creme. Um, and there are three colors of these, I think, which seems like a very small collection, but I don't know if it's just like a kind of summer kind of pop-up little collection. The texture of these is gorgeous. I've never seen them before or heard of them before. I don't know if it's a pre-existing formula, but it's the most beautiful cream to powder texture I've ever felt. They feel like absolute velvet when you touch them. They're almost like a powder, but then you realize they're so soft and creamy and they just blend beautifully. This color is quite a funny one. This is called Je Rose, Rose and it is, I think it's more of a highlighter really than a blush but it's very very subtle highlighter whereas if you go for the brighter colors which I didn't think I would like because it's quite, it's like quite a bright kind of corally pink color, they are just stunning. Like the way they blend they just kind of seamlessly blend into the skin. They're absolutely beautiful. I don't know the price of these, but I'll put it below um, or it'll come up in the strap because it wasn't actually in the press release, but really, really interesting texture. If you like your kind of cream to powder textures and you're looking for something a little bit different, then um, these are coming out this month from Lancome. Different packaging for Lancome as well with the baby pink. Not sure how I feel about that. No normally they have like a little bit more of a kind of sophisticated vibe. These I think are based around like macaroons and like cute sweet little kind of designs so um really really gorgeous texture and then next up chanel have actually i think it's a total relaunch of their eyeshadows but i'm not 100 percent sure but they've basically launched the ombre premiere both powders and creams and i have a few colors of these they actually sent me more than this but these are the colors that i wanted to show you because the cream eyeshadows actually interested me the most because they're obviously a replacement for their other cream eyeshadows which are beautiful but they didn't really stay in place on me they're quite smudgy but these are just the most stunning texture again they're like a gorgeous 
almost cream to powder, but they kind of keep that creaminess. They just apply absolutely beautifully and they come with a cute little brush, which is actually a bristle brush, not a sponge. And I wanted to show you this color as well. That first color is undertone, which is a beautiful, beautiful base. But this red is just the most stunning thing. It's like a really deep, warm brown and it has like this kind of red undertone to it that I just think would be gorgeous and so like wearable but still it's like a maroon kind of colour. So so nice um, and I absolutely love the texture of those. They're £25 each but what I would say is that the powder shadows are also £25 each and I'm not sure that I would pay £25 for a single powder eyeshadow just because of the amount of palettes that you get. If you guys can see, they're in these like round little containers and the texture of these is really nice as well. And they're nicely pigmented. They're not like heavily pigmented. They're like that middle range that makes them easy to use, easy to blend. This color in particular is beautiful. This one is called uh, Talpa and it's a satin finish. But I don't know whether I'd spend 25 pounds on an individual eyeshadow when you could buy like the naked palettes for kind of 40-ish pounds, if you get what I mean. I think it's quite pricey. Compacts are beautiful, but um, for me, the cream shadows are where it's at in terms of that release. And then Kiko Summer Collection is so gorgeous. I had to show you, even though it's already out. Um, they've released a little collection called Mini Divas. And this is what the packaging looks like. It's in like a display box still, but it's possibly the cutest thing ever. They're all in these gorgeous little boxes and you undo the sticker, they're all like baby pink and gold, and then you look inside, how cute is this? This is an eyeshadow. I have to say the pricing of these is a little bit crazy. I think the eyeshadows are still, I think this is like £4.90, but isn't that the cutest thing you've ever seen? And they have everything, they have like mini lipsticks, they have like a mini mascara, a mini eyeliner, and they're just like such cute packaging. I think they'd make the most gorgeous gifts. I love the quality of Kiko makeup as well, considering the price. Um, like I said, these aren't necessarily like the most affordable line from Kiko, but I just thought that was super cute and that's out now. And then Glam Glow are also launching a few new things this month. I think these might already be out. I know they're definitely out in the States. First thing is the Glow Setter Makeup Setting Spray. I love this stuff. I don't know if you guys can tell, I've been using it for the last week or so. It smells kind of like sweeties like gummy bears which I'm not sure how I feel about it but I really like it as a setting spray very glowy very kind of um moisturizing on the skin and I just I really really like that I love the packaging as well I think it's super cute um and I think that's around the 20 pounds for the full size but you can buy it in a mini that I think is just under 30 mil for about 12 pounds which is really good because I like miniature setting sprays and stuff for your handbag because they don't take up so much space but then they're also launching these, which are called the Glow Starter Illum Mega Illuminating Moisturizers. And these I don't like. So there are three shades of this, the Sun Glow, Nude Glow, and Pearl Glow. I've been using the Sun Glow one, which is like the more bronzy one. But I just really don't like the texture of these. I love the Glam Glow masks. I'm a big fan of them. But these just aren't really for me. They're quite pricey as well. I think they're about 36 pounds. And they do look nice. Like they have a real kind of like shimmer to the skin but they feel quite greasy to the point where like, I don't know, I just, I find them a bit oily and I don't necessarily think I would wanna put them underneath my makeup. Again, they smell kind of like gummy bears, which I do quite like, but they leave my fingers with that really irritating kind of greasy feeling. Not a fan of those, but love the setting spray. And then Clarins are launching their citrus collection for summer which, excitingly enough, has two of the Instant Light lip balms, which are my favourites. However, with these two, they've changed the scent away from the vanilla, and it now has an orangey flavour that tastes a bit like chocolate orange, so I do still kind of like it, but this colour, which is the Tangerine, I believe, doesn't actually have a name, it's number 14, so I think that's the Tangerine one, this is Grapefruit. The tangerine one is really orange to the point where like, I just really wouldn't wear it. Um, this one, which is the grapefruit one is really nice. It's like a really pretty pink. So if you're a fan of these, make sure you go and check out the new colors and new scents. Apparently they sell one of these every 36 seconds, which is pretty impressive. 
Um, and then they're also launching this little trio of hand creams, which I've tried them out and I actually do quite like the scents. They're all quite fresh because they're not um, citrus on their own. They're citrus leaf, so it's lemon leaf, um, mandarin leaf and grapefruit leaf. So they're very kind of like, you know how like the Jo Malone um, tomato leaf candle is, if you guys have smelt that? Similar kind of vibe, quite fresh, not so fruity, but really nice. However, it's 30 pounds, I think it's 30 pounds for the three. I just feel like I wouldn't need three hand creams. I wouldn't buy three hand creams in one go. So I think that's a bit random. Um, but yeah, if, you, if you're like obsessed with hand cream, I feel like it would be good. And then lastly on the makeup front, before we move on to more skincare stuff is the Smashbox new releases. They have launched their photo finish primer in a stick version and also in a primerizer, which is basically a primer and a moisturizer mixed together. Genius, great naming. Um, I really like the primerizer, it feels really nice, really moisturizing, um, but not greasy, and it leaves the skin feeling kind of like fresh and dewy. Really big fan of that, and it's definitely right up my street because I don't necessarily have dry skin, I have quite normal skin, but I don't want a primer that's gonna be really drying. On the other hand, the stick, I think, They've hyped it up a bit in their press release to be like super amazing, but actually it's very, very similar to like the Benefit Professional Stick or the Estee Edit Pore Stick that they've released. It's basically like a mattifying kind of priming stick, but you can use it on top of your makeup as well. So if you have oily skin, this kind of product is good, but I mean, it's nothing new really. And I think in terms of Smashbox being the brand that are known for their primers. I think they're a bit late to the game on this one. Another exciting thing that's coming out this month is the Beauty Pie skincare. Now, if you guys missed all of the hype around Beauty Pie when it first came out, I actually made a video kind of reviewing the whole process and whether or not you love it or hate it, that's up to you. But they're launching skincare this month and I have to say, I've been seriously, seriously impressed by it. First of all, starting off with the packaging. These three are actually empty because I've been using them. Um, this one is a full one. I just wanted to show you how much they have taken inspiration from Chanel. The packaging looks like the Chanel um, skincare packaging. Very classy, really beautiful, like heavy glass packaging. The interior of the actual like box packaging is baby pink with the kind of Chanel style, like black and white type on the front. Really gorgeous. They've nailed it with the packaging and the formulations are, from what I've tried so far, really nice. I've tried the cleanser, which is gorgeous. It's the double phase daily deep rinse off cleanser. I've also tried the eye cream, which I really like. And the fruit, fruit design, um, five minute facial I've used once and I liked it, but I need kind of like longer testing to have like a full review. But the pricing is really good as per usual with the beauty pie stuff, it's around about the five pound mark. So depending on what you buy, um, you do have to pay for membership though. So like I said in the beginning, it depends on whether you agree with the way it works or not. If you're already a member, definitely worth trying. And then more skincare stuff. Soap and Glory are launching sheet masks this month, which are £3.50. And then I think this one, which is not a sheet, it's like a clay mask and there's two applications, I think is four fifty. Really like the look of these, but I haven't tried them personally yet. The Miracle Moisture Mask excites me the most. It's got hyaluronic acid and it's actually a gel mask as opposed to a sheet mask. So usually they're the more expensive ones. They also have like an under eye, they've got a brightening one with vitamin C and they've got a pore refining one um, as well. And then obviously the um, declog clay ones. Excited to try those. I really rate Soap and Glory Skincare for affordable skincare, I think it's really good. And then they're also launching the Bright and Pearly. I mean, it's kind of like a serum. It's also kind of like a moisturizer. They're calling it a radiance boosting cocktail has vitamin C in it and like a pearl kind of, um, you know, when they put like physical like pearl spheres in there and then they break up when you pump them out. It, it does make your skin feel really, really nourished and fresh, but then it doesn't dry to be kind of sticky or oily at all. It feels lovely on the skin, but I don't actually know what it's supposed to be. Like it, it's a little bit of an ambiguous product, but it does seem quite nice. I feel like that's the most useless review ever, but I'm not 100% on board with it, but I do quite like it, if that helps. And then another new launch this month is from Sopa Dupa, which is a brand that I love, as much as I hate their packaging, I think their packaging is pants. Um, they are releasing a new scent. I think this actually may have come out at the end of June, but hey, I'm talking about it because I like it. Um, this is the Deluxe Yuzu Fruit and Fig scent. Love this, I love fig. I really like their body washes because they are 
90, well this one's 94% natural and they're just, the consistency is really, really beautiful. They come in these massive 500 mil um, containers. I think they're about six pounds. So they're affordable, but also natural and really nice. And the scent is gorgeous. They're releasing a body butter as well with the same scent as that, which is super nice as well. And then they're also launching the body scrub. This is a fruity green tuberose body scrub with crushed coconut and pineapple fruit acid. Um, I haven't actually used this one. It has no parabens, colors, mineral oil, SLS. 85% natural. Like I say, haven't used this yet. The smell, I just totally got it on my nose. The smell is like really fresh though and a little bit like grassy. So I'm not sure if I'm 100% on board with this, but that's new from Sopa Dopa, Sopa Dupa, Sopa Dupa, yes. And then last but not least, I feel like this video has gone a thousand miles an hour because there have been so many new releases this month. Jo Malone are launching these absolutely beautiful looking new fragrances. However, these aren't exactly up my street. They're like a more intense version of their Cologne Intense scents. So there's Tuberose Angelica, Oud and Bergamo, and um, Velvet Rose and Oud. I have to say, I actually really like the original scent, especially of Velvet Rose and Oud. It's one of my faves. And these are a little bit too intense for me. They are seriously like knock your socks off powerful. If you are the kind of person that likes that scent and slash or one of these scents is your like Jo Malone favorite, I mean, they are stunning. The bottles are absolutely beautiful and they have like metallic etching on them. Um, for me, these aren't really up my street and they are super pricey. They're 176 pounds each, I think. So um, definitely a more like luxe, a step in the luxe direction for Jo Malone, even though they are already a very luxury brand. I prefer the kind of fresher, lighter scents like Wood Sage and Sea Salt, um, Peony and Blush Suede. Um, the only cologne intense that I personally would list as like one of my favorites is the Dark Amber and Ginger Lily. Um, so if I'd be interested to see if they ever release a rich extract one of those, because maybe I would like it, but these are a little bit intense for me. So that's it for my new In Beauty video for July. Loads of new stuff coming out this month. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you're not already subscribed, Make sure you click that button because it would make my day and I'll see you again very soon. Bye.